Hey, welcome back. Come on in. Oh, but shoes off. Let's go. Can I get you a drink? Oh, of course. Uh, coffee? Uh, yes, please. Is that coffee? That's my that's my coffee? Yes. Let's do this tour. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Did you get new cabinets? These are actually not new cabinets. This is actually contact paper. I actually got the idea from Kim White on Apartment Therapy. I love Kim White. I just wanted it to feel warm and feel like a glow, like golden hour 24 seven. Do you feel like it's holding up well, like the yeah. wear and tear? Well, I barely use these because as you can see, I just store glasses in them. So okay. I don't. I don't have a lot of wear and tear because this is strictly all about entertaining. I don't have a lot of storage in here, so I actually use my oven as storage. So, don't okay. judge me. <laughs> so I actually treat my countertops like a part of the living room since it is open concept. So I like to use a lot of art, a lot of sculptures, a lot of flowers. I have artwork by my friend Ronnie, Ron Stoppable on Instagram. My favorite item in the kitchen is actually my bowl of fame. I wanted tangible memories of my friends. So whenever you come to my house, you know, we have to take a photo. I think we should take a photo right now. Okay, wait, oh, there we go. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, now there is a lot of new updates in this living room. So when it came to this space, I really wanted to focus on entertaining, but I also wanted the flow of the home to feel inviting. So when you came into the space, I wanted people to know exactly where to walk where they were going to sit if you have two pathways so if you have a lot of people some people can go one way some people can go another way but they all congregate together so that's very important you want to have clear sight lines of where people should navigate you want to utilize the measurements that are given to you online you want to also utilize blue tape blue tape is your best friend measure it out tape it out on the ground tape out the rug tape out where your sofa is going to be your tables and then you really get to see like the flow of the space and you see if it really works before you actually purchase your furniture. Just because you live in a smaller space or an apartment, don't buy small furniture. Buy the pieces that you love. If the sofa's big, maybe go small on the coffee table. Just buy the items that you absolutely love and that haunt you in your sleep, because they will haunt you. Before I had a large leather sofa that was, it was comfortable, but it just didn't look inviting. And then there were two structural chairs or sculptural chairs, shall I say. So it almost felt like you either sit here or you sit there. And it didn't feel like everyone was all together. I wanted them to know that every seat in this house is the best seat in the house. You can literally be sitting on the sofa, you can sit at the countertop, and you're still a part of the conversation. You're still a part of the party. I wanted the counter stools to kind of disappear with because they're light and fabric, but you really see the wood. So I really wanted to anchor that side of the space with the wood, but they also look very plush and lush and you want to sit there just like the rest of the space. I went with a Mario Bellini replica. It's low, it's bulbous, it's round. It feels like a lounge and that's the feeling that I wanted to go for. And they're actually really, really comfortable. They are very low to the ground. So what I did, I actually partnered with my furniture maker, Samuel Gregg, and we made a platform for these just to raise it up about three inches because you know, we are getting older. I don't want to have to roll out of the, out of the chair. <laughs> this looks very custom built as well. Yes. So this is a custom table that we did. It's actually just plywood and it's painted black. And then we did a marble top. This is actually a marble remnant. So it wasn't like a big slab. It was just a remnant. Remnants are just broken pieces of marble that you can pick up. They range from 25 bucks to 150 bucks. And you just take it to a fabricator and they'll cut it down for you to size. A lot of people don't know about that, but I frequent marble yards because I'm an interior designer. But you can go to any marble yard and say, hey, where's your remnants? They'll be glad to get rid of them. I think it's very important to think about how things move as far as texture. You have the marble coffee tables, that, that's a lot of movement. You have the wool rug underneath and it has a black and white motif but it's wool, it's thick, it's chunky. Then you have the sofas that are almost cloud-like, but then they're in velvet. And then I use silk pillows on them, so that's another texture. Then I also added linen drapes just to soften up where the windows are. Then you have the texture in the console, which is wood, and then you have the wood on the counter stool. So it's a lot of texture, but they play so well. These are from West Elm. These are West Elm pictograph consoles. So I got two, of course they don't match, but that's what I love about them. It's like an ombre effect. 
This actually stores a lot of my everyday essentials, like for coffee making and <laughs> happy hour. Sconces for lighting is very renter friendly. There's a lot of plug-in options. So I had my guy actually drill a hole in the wall and drop the cord through the wall and it's actually plugged in back there. But this wallpaper is like the biggest renter friendly hack. So I have a lot of wallpaper in my house, but this is actually peel and stick, so it's temporary. It just makes the space feel a little warmer and not as cold and like as new. So the biggest thing that you guys will see in the bedroom, the biggest impact is this wallpaper. So this is traditional wallpaper, but it is actually wall to ceiling. And I went with a big, bold graphic wallpaper in black and white to really make a statement. I wanted this wow factor in the room. And then with the wallpaper, I really decided to keep the whole room monochrome and only use two colors. I don't think monochrome is the right word, but I only wanted to use two colors black and white are black and cream. So, and the pops of color actually comes from the flowers, the natural wood tones in my desk that I actually kept from my first rendition of my bedroom because it's practical and it works. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but even in the living room, all of my furniture stops at the break in the window. And that was essential to this because I didn't want to block the view, but I also wanted to sit and look at the view. I mean, the train is passing by right now. Like, how iconic is that? So I actually made a sample wall near my desk and this is where I keep all the samples that I love and that I use a lot. This lamp is actually a fabric mushroom lamp and this is actually from CB2. It gives off the softest, warmest glow at night and it's the perfect work lamp because it's not too bright, it doesn't hurt your eyes and it gives off the perfect ambient lighting. Okay, I gotta be honest guys, this is like my second tree. So this is actually called a Shady Lady Black Olive Tree. The thing about these trees, like they're grown in Florida and that's where they naturally are. And they're very temperamental here in New York. This room doesn't get a lot of light. So I actually bought a grow light to make sure it doesn't die and they're very expensive. But I absolutely love this tree. So this is like, yes. And it just makes me feel like I'm not cooped up in a room. I have plant life around me. I have nature around me. The thing is I cannot work and live in chaos. So I have a philosophy. Everything that you see should be neat and organized. Now, if it's behind closed doors or closet doors, it's free game. Hire an organizer. <laughs> Before we go into the bathroom, this is a little moment. So this is at the end of the hallway and I placed a mirror here, a pencil cactus because, you know, we love our plants and just a little marble orb. This wallpaper is actually traditional wallpaper. It's actually from CB2. So as you can see, I have a, a good mix of peel and stick and traditional wallpaper in my home. But I did this moment here because if not, it just would have been a dead moment. And I think any space in your home that you can create a moment, create a moment. Like this is like the perfect selfie moment or the perfect cameraman moment. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that small spaces should always make a statement, like make the loudest noise. So in here, again, this is fill and stick wallpaper, but I actually did not like the background of the wallpaper. So what you see here is this is the wallpaper and this is actually the wall itself. So I actually took an X-Acto knife and cut the background out so we can get this graphic print. And that took me about three days total, just being in a bathroom, not consistently, but being in a bathroom and like just cutting all these shapes out. And then over here in the corner, I created a little moment, like a little spa-like moment. I think it's very important when you have a small space to create a little zen moment. So I have my crystal, I have my bath salts, I have my candle and my vessel that I made. And it's just a little moment. And this is probably the space that has changed the absolute most. So in this space, I have an antique mirror that I absolutely love and adore. And I, it will always go with me everywhere I go. So another design tip is to start from the walls and then work your way down. I saw the wallpaper and I was like, oh my God, I love that wallpaper. And then I decided I was just gonna change the whole dining room. The wallpaper has like these pastoral vibes. It reminds me of Napa Valley or Italy. It's actually traditional wallpaper from Bell Art Studio. They're based in Sweden. I absolutely love them. They're the same company that makes the wallpaper in my bedroom. I love the vibe of this. It's so calming. And I think living in New York, it's very important to have something that reminds you of nature. It's like you're in this field and then you look out the window and then you see the Chrysler building. So I love the juxtaposition of the two. So all of my inspiration literally will start with one item and then the complete vision will happen. Last go round, of course I had the banquette, at the table, but honestly living in the space, it was kind of hard to actually function in there and like work and like when you're having a dinner party, it was hard like for people to navigate around and somebody had to use the bathroom, everybody had to get out. So 
with this rendition of the dining room, I wanted to create something that everybody could kind of walk around and like it just flows a little bit. I also added like this soft boucle love seat because then I didn't want everything to be so hard in this space. The tabletop is actually from Eternity Modern and then the base of the table and this console, I custom designed with Samuel Craig as well. But this is also great storage because I store a lot of my plates in here too for dinner parties. So these light fixtures, they remind me of clouds. So I thought it was like so fitting with this wallpaper and then to have the city view in the background. And again, these are super modern. So it's mixing contemporary, modern, traditional. There's so many elements in this room. There's oxidized metal, there's brass, there's horsehair on the sconces. This was actually a window display. One of my friends was a visual manager at a store and they were actually gonna trash this. This says Kiss Me Carl, which is Carl Lagerfeld, the iconic designer for Chanel. And they were gonna trash this. And I was like, no, I want it. Like, I love typography and it's a piece of iconography that will go down in history and it's in my house. I also use my home as kind of like a springboard for design clients. So for instance, in the bedroom, I did the wallpaper on the ceiling and on the wall. That's something that I, I just wanted to try to see how effective it will be and how impactful it will be. And so my clients see it, they know it'll work. The thing about experimenting is you don't know if it works until you put it out to the world and see how everybody receives it. I do have very critical friends, so I bring them over and I'm like, what do you think? And if they're like, oh my God, this is sick, then I know I did it right. A lot of times I really just trust my own judgment and my own gut. Like, this is what I do. I see it in my head and I have the visions and I have to execute it. So if it turns out to be a mess, I'm probably gonna fix it before anybody ever sees it anyway. One of the things that really inspired change in my space and in my life is I lost close relatives within the last year or so. So with that change, I'm learning how to live every day without my close relatives. So my life is completely different. The life that I knew prior is not the life that I have right now because I'm learning to live every day without that person. So that really inspired change. I'm not the same person. So because I'm not the same person, I've evolved. My space evolved around me to become a new person. And it also allows me to not be afraid of change. Like death is one of those things that we can't control, but it changes you forever. So why not change your surroundings? You can't be afraid of change. You have to embrace it. And one of the ways I embrace it is really just by changing my space. And if it doesn't work, change it. Home to me is a place that I'm surrounded by everything I love, things that inspire me, and I've said it before and I will say it again, home is a love letter to yourself. This is the place that you dream, that you become the aspirational version of yourself. Home is basically everything.